Hello, my name is Terry Lynn, and I'm going to tell you about the contiguity principle as Clark and Mayer have written about it. First of all, what is the contiguity principle? When designing a module or lesson for instruction, the contiguity principle states that words must be placed or occur near the graphics that they correspond to. Clark and Mayer divide the principle into two parts, the first relating to words on the screen and the second relating to spoken narration. You might be wondering why keeping text or narration near to graphics helps people to better absorb information. Clark and Mayer summarized the findings of a number of eye tracking and research reports, concluding that when two pieces of correlating information are separated, your brain is forced to make the connection between the two on its own, often requiring you to remember one piece while viewing the other. This uses up valuable brain power, brain power that you could be putting towards obtaining your learning goals. This waste of cognitive capacity is what Clark and Mayer call extraneous processing. However, when the pieces are connected for you, you can devote more of your valuable brain power towards understanding the information you are being asked to learn. When should you, the designer, follow this principle? Clark and Mayer reflect on a number of reasons why you might have trouble following the contiguity principle, such as when the text you are trying to connect does not logistically fit the space available, and when high traffic or low bandwidth cause difficulties, but they also point out that separating related information goes against the way that people learn, and that you should always do your best to follow the contiguity principle guidelines, despite any design or technological challenges that may arise as a result of your attempts. The first guideline is that printed words should be near their corresponding images. Some tips for placing printed words near corresponding graphics include Avoid separating text and graphics because of a scrolling screen. If the graphic is listed as a figure that does not fit on the page with its description, then students will be required to scroll back and forth to access both pieces of information at once. Avoid separating feedback from its question or response. The example shown here doesn't work. It is much easier for the student to process what they did right or wrong if they can still see the question. Avoid separating lesson screens with link windows. If links must be made, make sure that the windows are small and manipulatable so that they do not block out the main screen. Similarly, avoid presenting exercise directions separate from the exercise. Avoid displaying captions at the bottom of screens. Instead, break the information into manageable pieces, like the bottom example here, and connect it to the image that it relates to, using a line if necessary. Avoid displaying animations and related text at the same time. It's hard for people to do both of these tasks together. Instead, allow them to read the text and then choose when to play the animation using an icon. Remember to make the animation small enough that it does not cover the text so that they can reference it if they need to. Avoid using a legend to indicate parts of a graphic. It is much easier for your students to comprehend a, a diagram that is labeled like the example here. The second guideline is that narrated information should be played simultaneously through their corresponding images. Some tips for achieving this include avoid separating graphics and narration because of a long presentation. It is much more effective to break the narration into smaller chunks and play the chunks separately with their corresponding images. Finally, avoid separating graphics and narration through icons. Make sure that you play both simultaneously through a shared icon. To summarize, always keep written and spoken words near to their related images so that your students will be able to use as much of their cognitive ability as possible towards their learning goals. Thank you for watching.